The Lions coasted into their bye week after a Monday night football win against the Seattle Seahawks. On tap now, week six at the Dallas Cowboys, and we're getting you ready for it right here on Inside the Pride. Let's go. This is Inside the Pride presented by Whisker, maker of the Litter Robot. I'm Danny Rogers. Before Detroit heads down to Arlington for what could be another epic showdown against the Dallas Cowboys, we're recapping the week four celebration of Calvin Johnson, the greatest receiver ever in Detroit history. Stop by the studio to discuss his Pride of the Lions induction. Seeing Calvin Johnson around Allen Park at practices on the sidelines of Ford Field, it just feels right. How does it feel for you, Kelvin, being around this team? Oh man, it feels great. You know, the energy is great. You know, I love Dan. You know, I remember Dan as a player. I had the fortune of playing with him for a couple of years here in Detroit. And for him to come back, I know the influence that has on the player. I know the energy that it can create. And we've seen it. The energy is great around this place. And you know, it's hard to uh, not be around it. Kelvin, for the rest of football eternity, when people step inside Ford Field, they will see Kelvin Johnson in the pride of the Lions etched up there into the rafters. What emotions came to you during that Monday Night Football induction? You know, it's just almost very similar to, you know, when you get knocked for the Hall of Fame, you know. The, the rush of all the emotions that were had during those nine years play here, all the good times had, all the bad times had, you know, to help you grow, you know, here uh, over my course of time here, playing here at Ford Field, here at Allen Park. It's, it's so much emotion that you get rushed with that it just brings you to tears. You know, because you're being recognized amongst all the greats that have been here before, and now you're up there with those greats. So for my family to be able to see it, you know, for my little boys to be able to see it, you know, that's everything. Over nine seasons with Detroit Lions, it's a lot of snaps that you played. What is your favorite moment of all time? That's tough. When you think about it, you think I would say like one particular play or anything like, but it was one particular moment that came after a game that we played in Philadelphia is when we played uh, infamous snow game. And the reason I say that game, it wasn't, you know, the stat line wasn't crazy at that, that game at all. But it's the things that happened after that game, my mom was going to the airport and she slipped and fell and she found that she had pancreatic cancer. And fortunately she's still with us today because of that fall, because she came to that game. So that's for me, that's a big moment for me, you know, that, um, cause you know, that's, that is a, really a death sentence almost when you hear that you got that, cause usually it's too late. You know, so we were fortunate, you know, that she did take that fall at that game and they were able to, to find that, that when they went in to, you know, check her out um, for the fall. Kelvin, you mentioned your mom, and I know you shared a really special moment with your dad when you broke the record for receiving yards in a single season back in 2012. You gave him the game ball on the sidelines. How ingrained is Detroit football in the Johnson family? Oh, I mean, <laughs> like you say, my parents, they go to every game. I mean, my parents, my dad probably retired a year or two into, into my career here. So after he retired, you see him and my mom at, get here, games here at, uh, in Fort Field or any game that we played away. So it's ingrained into them. My little sister was usually with them because she was still in school. My brother and my older sister, they came when they could because they were in college. So, you know, there's many good times spent, you know, whether it's just traveling on the road, you know, um, I remember good times we had in New Orleans, you know, it's hard to, hard to not have a good time there. But the whole family just there, you know, when we were there for the playoffs. You know, so Lions football now that, you know, I'm in the ring, now that, you know, uh, I'm retired and Hall of Famer, and now we're getting back into the, you know, the, the, the groove here with the team, you know, just being around, um, you know, it's great. It's great for me to be able to be here, to be able to inspire those guys. It's great for me to be able to be here, like I say, so for my kids to be able to see the, the, the good works that I did here. Mm -hmm. Why is it important for you to be able to mentor the current players on this team? It, it's important for me to be able to be around just for those guys, for anything they have, any questions that they have, on field, off field. I mean, just having a conversation with somebody that's been there and done that, there's a lot to glean 
I feel like I feel like I got a ton of things that I could dump into these guys, whether it's on the field, like I say, whether it's off the field, whether it's business experience, whether it's relationship experience. You know, there's so many different things that I've been through um, over the course of my time. I mean, even just after the league, I've been out the league like nine years now. You know, put on my professional, my business hat. I have a family now, I have three little boys. So, you know, anything I can pour into these guys, I'm just there. I'm not there to. I don't need anything from them. You know, I just want to be able to dump into them anything I can, anything they, anything they need. You've been through so many ups and downs with this team. Why can you now relish in the success that this team is having right now? Really, like I say, being at the very bottom. You know, going through a season where we didn't we didn't win one game, and to see this team where it is right now, and it's, it's even more than the team. It's really the people in the city. You know, people. This, this is a true sports town. This is a football town. I mean, yes, we have all the great, all the great sports here downtown, but this is a football town. As you saw over the course of the last years, from when we were in the playoffs last year and all throughout the offseason, the draft was here. And there was just an energy, it was just a buzz. It was extremely satisfying to be able to see the turn that the city has taken, not only just the team, but just the way downtown is now. It's just the city of Detroit in general. So it's a great time to be here. Inside the Pride is presented by Whisker and brought to you by the Ford Motor Company, Henry Ford Health, and by Meyer. Kelvin Johnson was just inducted into the Pride of the Lions. The former number two overall pick cemented his name into history books over his nine years playing in the Motor City. He's got some incredible moments. I've got my top five Kelvin Johnson moments, and we're going back to Oakland because he had some big plays in the Bay. 2011, week 15 at the Oakland Raiders, Megatron grabbed this 51-yard touchdown catch en route to 99 receiving yards on the day. This game kept the Lions in contention for the playoffs, which they clinched the following week against San Diego for the first time since 1999. Calvin hauled it in and took it in 51 yards. Empty backfield, Stafford takes, throws, end zone, Calvin, touchdown Detroit Lions! Calvin Johnson hauls it in, second touchdown of the game. Calvin just doing what Calvin does. We're sprinkling in some toe taps, but we've also got some lion leaps in here as well. There is no doubt that triple coverage against Cincinnati was one of Megatron's most iconic highlights of his entire reel. We're going back to 2013, week seven, a 50 yard dime on third and 18, finds a leaping Calvin Johnson in the end zone with not one, not two, but three defenders crashing on him. Yet yeah, Megatron still made this catch look so easy. And that is why he's one of the greatest to ever do it. He goes up, he makes the catch. Are you kidding me? Oh, Megatron, you did it again. All right, one of the best traditions ever in the NFL happens in the Motor City every Thanksgiving day. We're throwing it back to 2015. Megatron helped the Lions rack up 45 points and a win over the Eagles on Thanksgiving Day. Johnson recorded three TDs, his career game high, and it was the first three score game for Johnson since he did it back in 2010 against Washington. Johnson is there for the touchdown. Number three on the day for Calvin Johnson. We always love a big dub on Thanksgiving Day. In honor of Detroit heading to Dallas this weekend for week six, we are throwing it back to 2013, October 27th, after going 14 for 17 on the day and a 329 yard performance, Megatron secured the second most receiving yards in a single NFL game, a record that still stands to this day. After Burner's engaged, Calvin at the 40. Calvin Johnson being chased by four Cowboys inside the 10 and knocked out of bounds at about the two or three. Pass to Johnson, touchdown. In addition to Calvin Johnson setting almost every single Detroit Lions franchise receiver record, he also set a pretty big one in the NFL. We're throwing it back to 2012. On December 22nd, Calvin Johnson made history when he surpassed Jerry Rice's single season record 
for the most receiving yards. Megatron moved into the number one spot with 1,964 receiving yards in a single season. And he took the time to celebrate with his dad, Calvin Johnson Sr. on the sidelines. An incredible moment for the Johnson family and a record that still stands today. Megatron into the record books. The single season all time NFL receiving yardage record. This is emotional to me to see this type of support for their favorite player, Calvin Johnson. There are nine incredible years out of the one and only Calvin Johnson. That wraps up my top five plays. We'll be back after this. Welcome back. I'm now joined by head coach Stan Campbell, and you had a bye week just four games into the season. What are some of the advantages of having such an early bye week, coach? Uh, weather's nice still, I guess. No, I look, I think, uh, you know, we had some injuries, so we get to heal up, and, man, you take it where you can get it, and we, we got to get our bodies back. We got to get our minds back. I'm talking about the players and the coaches, um, and, and now we got the big push here. Mm -hmm. Big push will be needed against these Dallas Cowboys who have turned into a very familiar opponent yeah. since you've taken over at the helm, Coach, but we got to start with Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb. Expensive duo, but a very consistent duo. What well, makes that connection so lethal? I'm with you. I would pay them, too. I mean, <laughs> these guys are, are two of the best at what they do. Look, there's a number of reasons. Reasons. I, I think this this guy is one of the best under center, man. He's a poised quarterback. He sees the field. He understands defenses. And then when you get a guy who he trusts very much, I mean, this is like, that is golf and this is Saint, you know? And so just think of it in those terms. And this guy does a great job, body control balance. You don't know if he's going in, he's going out. He can separate. And then his ability to drop his weight, run after catch. These are the things he does. It's never over, man. You got to tackle this guy low because he'll take it to the house. Four different receivers for Cowboys had 50-plus yards Sunday night. How do you brace your defense for all those playmakers? I thought what Pittsburgh did was outstanding because what they said was CD is not going to be the guy who beats us. And so you know what that means is, all right, you got to go take Tobert, you got to take Ferguson, you got to shut down the back, and you got to win your one-on-one. -on -one. That's the bottom line. So our guys, somebody's going to be in a one-on-one -on -one against these other guys, and they got to win. They got to win those reps. That's what they're here for. And running back Rico Dowdle has been waiting in the wings, but he had his best career game Sunday night, 87 yards on the ground. How do you introduce your defense to a guy like that? Well, I think number one, don't look, we've done a really good job against the run. It's one of the things we pride ourselves on. Uh, those guys up front, Reader and Mack and Levi and Hutch. And I mean, we, we, that's what we do. Alex in the middle. Jack. And so, man, we that's got to be our calling card. It can never slip away. And as long as we handle our business, we'll make it hard on them. But just understand, if you don't do your job, this guy will hurt you because they can move you up front. And this is a strong runner. He fills a crease. He's going to go downhill. He'll keep churning his legs. And if they get this going with this quarterback, now here comes your run action, all the things they can do off of it in the boots. Defensively, linebacker DeMarvion Overshone, he didn't play rookie year because of an injury. So he's still considered a rookie this year. However, he's making a name for himself. How is he doing it in year two? Well, I we like this guy coming out and because he is. He, he is – the quintessential run and hit linebacker. He sees it, he goes, here he is in the box. He'll do some of this. He'll also play on the line, a little bit stacked. He's not a big guy, but he plays bigger than he is. He can get off blocks, and man, when he sees it, he can run, he can hit, he can trigger, he's explosive. And I feel like this guy every week has gotten better and better and better. And so we're gonna have to have a hat on him. We can't just let him roam free back there because he will. He'll run and chase and make the play. Mm -hmm. Still looking for your first win against these Dallas Cowboys yes. as head coach. But you said earlier, every week you find a new reason to win a ball game. What is your number one reason this coming Sunday? Well, I don't know if I need to say it. All right, look, I grew up in Texas. And I'm, and for me, this is going back home, and and I want this, I want this, and and I'm not the only one who wants it. You know, we've lost twice in a row to these guys. You know, it's time to go down there and make our mark and play a clean football game, and, and we got to go earn it. And these guys will be ready. We just got to earn it. All right, coach. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. This week, I'm joined by offensive lineman Penny Sewell, and October 9th, happy birthday, Penny. How old are you now? I'll be 24. Two babies, a lot of games played in the NFL. Do you still feel like you're in the early 20s? I think so. Yeah. Um, I feel good. At 24 years old, you are one of the youngest tackles in the league, but you're also top five in the league at your position. How do you consistently stay ahead of the pack in your game? Just kind of tuning out the noise, especially. Um, there's a lot of hype around, especially with media and all that nowadays. So just kind of focusing on what I can control and just coming in each and every day, the same guy and just trying to get better. 
the O-line as a whole. Right now, it's ranked number two across the NFL per PFF, but it's been so consistently good since you were drafted in 2021. What's made the difference in that unit being so elite over the last few years? I think it's just our relationships. Um, just gotten closer with each year I've been here and st uh, starting to get to know the guys and even growing into that fatherhood role. We've all had kids at the same time, so I think that's really made it special and we get to share those moments and we all get together, uh, let the kids kind of hang out and uh, while they're doing their thing, we're, we're hanging out too and chopping it up. So I think that dynamic and those relationships just get stronger. You are coming into this season as a father of two. How has that changed maybe your motivation on the field a little bit? It's a lot different now that I have a baby girl. Um, I come home and now she's smiling. And every time I see that smile, it's just kind of like the same as my wife. And it's just, it, it reminds me of what life is really all about. And it's just those happy moments and those, uh, those precious moments that I get to have every time I come home. So uh, the motivation is definitely uh, different. Coming off your first team all pro season in 2023, what was the biggest improvement you wanted to make in 2024? Consistency, to be honest, every play, uh, being as dominant as I can, locked into all the details and just knowing more than what my assignment is also. So I know where all the guys next to me are going and being comfortable with that. Over the last couple of training camps coming into the season, you've talked about communication and your leadership. You own the pregame huddle speeches before every game now. Where do those speeches come from? Started at the University of Oregon. I kind of got out of my shell a little bit out of high school and uh, found it, found myself and the guys, my teammates at the university uh, were, I guess, surprised when, when I did it the first time and they kind of felt that I was just, I guess, speaking from the heart then and they were just telling me that I need to do it and that you bring a different type of energy. So from there on, I kind of just took that role. It was thrown upon me, but then as time goes on, I kind of chose to be that and it, it kind of shaped into who I am and uh, I love it. Do you ever go back and rewatch them and be like, how in the heck did I come up with this stuff? It's good. Yeah, no, I don't know how I come up at all. It's like really go, I black out every time. I just kind of just let the feelings and emotions and what what comes to me. And I just kind of say it and yeah, I, I guess I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. The offensive line has had some Good highlight plays on the reel so far this season. One is carrying David Montgomery for a first down, which was incredible. And then the last game against Seattle, Taylor Decker actually blocks five defenders on his own. How much love have those two plays gotten in the O-line room? A lot, to be honest, just because that's the that's standard. And if you can put the standard on tape and uh, show, I guess, the younger guys too coming up, the the rookies and stuff like that. It's always good and it's always good to look back and we always talk about how we felt in the moment and what it was like. That play that um, David took uh, against the Seahawks, to see Deck run down, to see Yodi, Yodi too, Yodi got out there, it's contagious. You know, those things are contagious and uh, those are the guys that you can follow. Dan Campbell's looking for his first win as head coach against the Cowboys and you are as a player as well. Why is this year different? We have another opportunity to go out there and put what we should have done the past couple of years, you know? And uh, that's the fun thing about this game. Like every year is different. Just like you said, also we haven't won. That also adds to the fire. Looking forward to going down to Dallas for sure. Wishing for something special? Maybe it's VIP seats, the meal of a lifetime, or an unforgettable journey. Whatever it is, Community Financial Credit Union can make it a reality. Share your impossible dream at impossibledreams.org by scanning the QR code at the bottom of the screen. Welcome back. I've got a whole new Rogers Rewind for you on this episode of Inside the Pride. It was bye week for the Detroit Lions and the Lions pride is growing. Shout out to Malcolm and Kennedy Rodriguez. They were married this past off season. Now they're going to be welcoming a new little one to the family coming 2025. Congrats to the Rodrigos. And it is fall, which means lots of people are heading to the pumpkin patches, including the Sewells. Shout out to the Sewell family. It looks like they got their pumpkins picked for their front door. Hopefully they got some cider and donuts as well. Any recommendations on good pumpkin patches for me to get some cider and donuts on? I'm all here for it. 
Detroit Lions are back in action and on the road. Detroit will head down to Arlington for a 425 p.m. kick against the Dallas Cowboys. We'll see you down there and we'll see you right back here next week on Inside the Pride.